Yo! Hello guys. I was just animating this shot right here in my film and I figured actually this is something that some of you would find very handy. And so the topic of this video is how to animate in slow motion. If you are a hand-drawn frame-by-frame animator, I'm in TV Paint right now and I will show you how I'm able to make it look like I have drawn a lot more frames than I actually have. If I just press play here, you can see that it looks like they're very slowly, very gently twisting and moving, right? But if you zoom in, they still have this kind of redrawn look. In fact, from this drawing to this drawing, this gives it away here because you can see that that's the same drawing, but it's been moved. But if I were to have it on fours, it would look like I had drawn every frame. So I could if I wanted to. So it depends how smooth you want it, but you can make it look like every frame is hand drawn when in fact you're repeating frames. So I've drawn this character in this pose and I started with one drawing. So in fact, if I just hide this, you can see that that was my storyboard. So I sketched out the basic gesture, but it was a little bit loose. And then I just drew on a frame above a slightly less loose version, but trying to keep the energy captured within that. And I drew the same pose again, you see? I just redrew it with my lightbox table, this thing here, showing the previous frame, okay? And I just traced over the first drawing with the same energy, the same kind of brushstroke style to try and keep that gestural energy. And then I did it again. So I've done a third one and I'm just finishing it off now. But if you look at the light table here, I've got it changed to two away because I want to still be tracing over that first drawing. That is an important part that you gotta do. Always reference your first drawing if you don't want there to be any kind of gradual shift away from the original pose. Now, we can redraw this pose as many times as we want. The more times you redraw the pose, the more convincing the effect is, okay? Now, the minimum number of times to get that hand-drawn look is two times, but to my eyes, I don't think two drawings is enough. Three drawings is kind of a sweet spot. Four drawings would be even more ideal, but of course, with every drawing you do, it takes up more time. I think because I'm trying to impress you guys, I'll just go once round again, uh, and I'll go for a fourth drawing. So I'm gonna shift K, to delete in front of us, to create a blank frame in front of us. Put the light table to a third away from behind, so it's still referencing that first original drawing. I'll just turn off the storyboard for more clarity. There we go. And I'll go once around again. A quick tip for in-betweening, if you want to make sure that you're not missing any parts to your in-betweens, um, it's good to just go around the whole figure and then end up back at the same place where you started, which is at the hand for me. And if you don't get the line correct the first time around, undo it and go, you can try it from the other side, from the other end. Now, this might look quite pixely to you, quite pixelated, but that's because the figure is actually really small in the frame for this shot. So we're actually zoomed way, way in and we're using a bitmap software. TV Paint is a bitmap software. So it's actually made of hundreds of tiny squares, just like in Photoshop or a painting program, because you can paint in TV Paint as well as animate. You want your drawings to be similar, but you want there to be a little bit of variation. That's where you'll find the charm of 2D hand-drawn animation. You don't want to eliminate all of the little mistakes because those mistakes are really what gives it that appeal. There's just something nice about something that's handmade, something that's hand-drawn, some kind of charm to it that you can't get when you are over-reliant on a computer. But that's why I like this method, this slow motion method, because it's not too over-reliant on the computer and it retains the energy and authenticity of your drawings. Okay, so I've done four drawings now. I'm just gonna play them so you can see what it looks like. So you can see that that is too intense. It's wriggling really intensely not what we want. So I'm gonna just double click just under where you see the numbers. 
double click there and that selects all of the frames. So I have my handy custom panel over here, but you might have yours over here or somewhere on here, okay? Uh, you can drag things about in TV Paint to suit you. Under set exposure, I'll do on twos for now. And look at that, that's already better, but it's still too fast, too intense. So I'm gonna, let me just select them again. I'll set the exposure to three now, I see. See, it's looking a little bit more relaxed, a little bit slower. Maybe I'll just try it on fours. I didn't have them all selected. Okay, I'll try them on fours. I like having things on fours. So you can see it's really, it's, we were really zoomed in there. Okay, that's quite good. Let me try threes again, now that I'm zoomed out. Yeah, I'll keep it on threes. We're gonna duplicate the low because whenever I make a change that could be destructive in TV Paint, I always duplicate the layer first, and then I highlight that as red, so that I just know that that layer is a duplicate and it's going to become irrelevant very soon. Now, I'm gonna take this strip here, and I'm gonna stretch this out to the end of the shot, and then immediately what comes up is this notice. Now, you've got a bunch of really useful options on here. What we want is this one, second down, repeat. So it's going to take those frames and it's gonna repeat them. So I'm gonna hit apply. So what it's done is it's looped that around for that duration. So if we zoom in, we can see that for that duration, it's now repeating them, okay? Now, what I did there while I was talking, I should have told you, it. I took off the auto break instances, these two, okay? I unselected them because we want any effects that we put on to be applied only to these frames and to not create new instances or exposures, okay? Uh, just a little technical thing, don't worry about it too much, just make sure you do it. Now I'm going to hit this icon, no, not that icon, this icon, yes, effect stack. Yeah, I already have it preloaded, wait. I'll just pretend like I haven't done it yet, but yeah, let me just delete those. Okay, so I've got my effect stack here and I totally didn't do this beforehand. Click this drop down here and we've got our different effects that we can bring in here. Now I am going to go to distortion and I'll go to optical flow. You could also use warp grid, that's quite nice, but I find that with a really small thing in the frame like this, warp grid isn't very effective. So. I would do optical flow for this. This is a way that we can actually kind of manipulate what's on here. Yeah, so have a little play about with it like I'm doing. We have this kind of brush thing and we have these nodes all over the place. I'm gonna set my first keyframe and I'm gonna set it on frame one. I'm gonna just keep this the same, right? This is the start position. That's what I'm gonna treat it as. Go to the end frame. I'm gonna hit the key again. So we have a key at the beginning, key at the end. When we jump to one of these keys, we can try manipulating this. So, and you just kind of brush like this and the brushing kind of affects the nodes, right? And you can see from the nodes like where they are moving to from their original position. And everything in the vicinity of those nodes gets affected by this. And now we can drag across and we can see what that's doing. We can literally just preview it by, by scrubbing around in the timeline. Okay. Now, if we want, we can actually go back to the frame one and we could actually move back in the opposite direction. Let's try that. Let's see what that looks like. I wanted him, I should have said this at the beginning, I wanted him to be bending backwards, kind of falling backwards. That might be a bit too much. Let me just see. I'll press play to see how fast that is. Oh, that is quite fast. I think that's a bit too fast. So let me just move that just lessen the effect of that. So it's not quite as strong. I'm, I'm paying attention to the feet so that not both feet are sliding, otherwise it won't look very realistic. Okay, that's looking a bit slower. That's really looking like slow motion now. Remember I said to take off auto break instances, these, these two little icons, make sure they're off, right? When you do that and you double click to select all the frames, and you click apply, it's only going to apply them to these frames. So it's not going to look tweened in any way. It's not going to look artificial. It's going to have the appearance that you drew all of these slow motion frames. When you didn't, you only drew four frames. But before we do, I'm going to hit this one, effects bin, 
and I'm going to add this effects bin to our bin so that if I need to do it again at any point, I have these settings that I've created saved. So I can access the same effect later. Now I'm going to double click. I'm going to hit apply effect stack and it's going to apply that. And I think the results, it looks like slow motion, but it also looks like I've drawn each frame by hand a little bit, you know? So that's one of the ways that I'm doing slow motion. It's not taking as much time as if I were to draw that all out. This right here would have been 22 drawings if I had done it the conventional way. Instead, it's four drawings and it looks like it's being drawn. It's obviously not quite the effect that you would have if you drew all 22 frames, but it's very, very close. And so if you're pressed for time and you want to create a cinematic slow motion moment in your film, but you don't want to spend all of that time drawing these minute changes from drawing to drawing, TV Paint offers a really smart way uh, of creating slow motion and it's great, I love it. It's for effects animation and it can be used for character animation. If you want to make animations of your own, Mastering Motion is an advanced online animation course designed to train you in techniques that go far beyond the principles of 2D animation. Advanced techniques like 3D hand-drawn camera movement, fight choreography, effects animation, character animation, as well as my reference process. If that sounds a bit too advanced for you, if you're a beginner, then I've got you covered as well with my Getting Started in 2D Animation course. This one lays the foundations of everything you need to make your own animated films. That includes drawing principles, animation principles, storyboarding principles, and the rendering process. And this is all in one place. No need to hunt down obscure videos in distant corners of the internet. We build you up with animation exercises that grow in complexity as you learn more. It's a course that will help you to develop the ability to fully realize on the screen whatever crazy ideas are going on in your head. Go to animatorguild.com to learn more about these. The link is in the description and pinned in the top comment of this video. Subscribe to the channel, leave a comment if you like, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.